Hey, hey, it's the official podcast, episode 287, maybe, somewhere in that yeah. general ballpark. Perfect, you nailed it. Perfect. We're joined by YouTube's best boxer, I Did a Thing, Alex. How's it going? Yeah, good, good. Thanks for having me. You beat any more ass since the creator clash? No, I've been trying to hold out. Like, I've seen plenty of people around and I've been like, I want to punch that man. But then I was like, no, I'm too dangerous now to do this. <laughs> the bloodlust is too much. <laughs> exactly. I could hospitalize this guy with one good jab. He's actually calling exactly. into the podcast right now from an American prison. <laughs> am. Three consecutive life sentences. They only let me have an hour of Discord time, so I'm sure that's all right with you guys, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that, that should be enough. That should be enough, hopefully. And if it's not then don't beat us up. I'm scared to like disagree with you on the podcast now after the... I'll just beat up the prison <laughs> guard and get some more time. It's all right. I'm sure I can <laughs> yeah. do it. <laughs> yeah, your performance uh, was scary. Let's put it that way. Yeah, it was, um, it was actually unexpected for me as well. I wasn't really just sure what would happen at all. You know, first, first match and just kind of first proper fight. And I, I don't was believe just like, you. I have... You've had experience. I, I, I know when I see a man that's got experience, you've got experience. You have to. I've, I've sparred. I've never done anything like that. That was the first time I've hit someone in the face with a hundred percent. Sure. The way you came out to that choreographed dance routine, we oh, knew was... you were going to fuck someone up. It was so good. It felt like it was straight out of like blades of glory or the WWE or something. It was so good. <laughs> I honestly think that helped a lot though, with just the, the boxing mentality. Cause I was, I was more focused on getting the dance right than actually fighting. Which was, which was probably a good thing, actually. So you're yeah, just that powerful. Loose. You didn't even have to think exactly. of combat. Exactly. Man, this is a great podcast. I just come on and get complimented. This is great. <laughs> yeah. Well, that moves Again, us to our next question. Why are it's you so annoying? <laughs> no, no, don't. Don't oh, do that, Andrew. <laughs> I, I will leave. I will go. <laughs> no, please. Please stay. We need to. We need those strong arms. Yeah. So, what was the process of getting into the Creator Clash? Did they did they just message you and say we need you? Um, well, I actually so Ian posted his video, kind of calling out Rice Gum, and then I think I commented on that, um, just saying fight me, and then he <laughs> just sent me a message like a month later, just adding me to the Discord server. Um, but it was quite funny because for a while I th I still thought that I was fighting Ian, so I was like, oh shit like this is bad like this guy's been training for a while and i was just you know just was training for that essentially um which is probably a good way to do it actually um but it was only like two months down the track that i found out i was i was fighting odd ones out oh that must have been such a relief for you it was but then again i didn't know anything about him so i was looking and it's like when you search up james odd ones out all you see is like photos from like probably like four years ago where he's like skinny and like 18. So I was just like, okay, this cannot be him now. He must just be absolutely jacked, um, which he kind of was, but kind of wasn't, you know? <laughs> you guys were in the very, like a very similar bracket of experience and general size. I think you still had quite a leg up on size, but yeah, it was a lot more even than if you just Googled his name before the fight, because that's exactly what Matt and my friends mm. did. They're like, after meeting you, they're like, he's absolutely going to murder a man in the ring if, if this is James <laughs> now. Because they have him listed at like 5'8", 160 pounds on like his wiki tubia or whatever. So it's, yeah. it wasn't even close. In real life, he's a, he's a much bigger guy. Well, uh, we came in actually like the same weight. Yeah. Um, which is almost unbelievable. Even for myself watching back the footage, I'm like, we look very different. Um, but... That is, I, I did a little bit of a, um, like, I just didn't drink water, like, that morning. and only drank, like, a litre the day before. Um, so, I was going to say it's cheating. It's not cheating. You're technically allowed to do it. But it's like, yeah, I was probably, like, six, seven pounds heavier than him on the actual fight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. That's a pretty standard thing that a lot of, like, real fighters do. <laughs> like, which I would now say mm. you're in that echelon of, like, could be a real fighter. <laughs> so, you took it very serious and it paid off. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think that's what you have to do, though. When, you, when you're threatened with being punched in the face by another man, it's like, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. If that doesn't get you fit and, like, training, I don't know what will. Like, 
Was that how you were motivated initially? I doves was like, I'm going to punch you in the face if you don't do this. Yeah, that's exactly it. And I was like, shit, I better learn some defense. <laughs> so yeah, what, what did you focus more on when you were training? Uh, like, did you focus more on how to hit other people or did you train more on preventing? Preventing um, the hits? Well, because well, I'm so lanky, I'm, it's kind of lucky that like when I hit, that's kind of a defense in the same time because my arms are so long. So it's oh, like you got reach. a lot of the time it's like when I'm hitting, it's like I can't actually get hit back, which is really nice. Um, but as for training, I, I definitely like, I just, I had no idea how to do any of this. So I just went to a boxing coach and was like, look, I've got a fight in six months. I'm getting in the ring. I'm going to get beaten up in front of 10,000 people. <laughs> so I need to learn how to fight. Um, and he was just like, he started me sparring straight away, which is probably the best thing to do, but also terrifying at the same time. Like, so, I don't know if you guys have done sparring, but it's like for my first month, I was like... Every time before I went to the gym, I was just having an, an anxiety attack. I was like, this is fucking terrifying. I used to do Taekwondo when I was a, a child and there was a sparring component there. I know, I know your fear. I understand it. <laughs> Granted, they <laughs> didn't hit as hard when they were nine years old, but it's all the same. <laughs> Why did you give it, it up? Well, I mean, you were nine as well, so it's... <laughs> yeah, you could still be hitting nine-year-olds. Yeah, you, know. you would dominate them. <laughs> I should well, just stay the really tall ones. <laughs> yeah. Go to the stadium member. Go to the nearest, like, dojo and go order 66 on all the little children in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, that's the most, like... Uh, combat experience i have is when i was like an actual child so it <laughs> was like experience. you you break boards and then you spar with like your friends in like headgear and everything it was cool that's that's pretty terrifying though i can't imagine having to box someone after they just smashed an object in front of me like that's makes it a bit more scary yeah i also kind of embellished it a bit it's not like it was a real block of wood or anything it was that plastic yeah, was like breakaway styrofoam. stuff <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, WWE your fighting style stuff. has evolved from that, Charlie. Didn't you say that if you were ever in a fight, you would go straight for the testicles? Yeah, well, like, if it's a real, well, like, actual fight, fight, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah any yeah, of us different. would. That's survival. That's I not know. a boxing match. I agree. I'm mm. surprised, though. Uh, are we, what, what are we calling you? I did a thing? Or do you want us to call your name? Oh, Alex, I don't mind. You can just, you can Alex. say Alex. Okay, yeah. Uh, I, I'm surprised. Like, as, I feel like if I was in the ring, as soon as I got hit... All semblance of rationale would have left my mind, and I would have just gone into extremo <laughs> mode instead of grabbing into nuts, testicle grabbing try, mode, trying anything. I would have been, try, I would have been rolling around on the floor. Well, that, I think that's why they make us wear ball guards because that probably happens a lot. So that just like <laughs> it makes it slightly harder to grab a man's testicles. Did you Was find? Did you bit? find it difficult to like stay mentally focused on what you were doing when you were getting repeatedly smashed in the head? Though you weren't I mean, really, were you? That's the thing is like, I think it, I was very lucky in that I didn't actually get hit at all in the face and I only got hit once in the belly, but that was already after I landed a, like a big right hand. Um, so I was very, very focused. Like I had this thing, it felt like something out of like Lord of the Rings or something. Like <laughs> I, could, I could hear the crowd, I could hear everyone talking, but then as soon as like the, <laughs> the ref kind of like told us to go, everything just went silent and I just had this weird hyper focus and I was very aware I was in it but I was just like okay beat this man it's like my brain went full monkey mode I was just like I have no purpose but to destroy this man in front of me right now but you still did it in a respectful way he did yeah it was really classy well as soon as I hit landed that big right hand I was just like fuck like because in Australia if that happens, like if you hit someone in the face and they kind of stumble, there's this rule, I think it's called like a standing eight count. So the ref has to come in, stand in front of them and, and count to eight seconds. Um, but because that didn't happen, I was just a bit like, oh, so now I have to keep hitting this this man that doesn't look like he wants to get hit at all in the face. <laughs> it's just, uh, yeah, it's a strange thing to do. Uh, how much does the, uh, the like, what are they called? The boxing gloves. How much do they like... Uh change the impact does it how much does it hurt still to get hit in the face with those it hurts a lot like i thought it would make it soft like a kind of you know someone's just hitting you like a pillow fight um but it's it's not like that at all like every time even jabs like when i was sparring when you get jabbed in the face like i would get black flashes like my brain fucking bouncing around inside my head and giving me a concussion like yeah yeah it's, it's, it's from the boxing I've... gloves 
uh, your, your from head. yeah from what i've heard with boxing gloves especially modern ones it's less about cushioning blows and more about cushioning the fists so you can punch more <laughs> mm. yeah that's pretty exactly which is pretty so, fucked like with, that's yeah the boxing gloves actually lead to more knockouts than like if you were bare knuckle because with bare knuckle you're hurting yourself more with each hit so you start to less, you start to hit hard or less hard yeah that makes a lot of sense and probably also you on the other person's face as well they're going to start bleeding and just have kind of like superficial cuts which would mm -hmm. stop the fight before actually yeah getting knocked out oh yeah so but the boxing um, gloves are to prevent you from getting their blood on your fingers exactly you don't want to be yeah. messy yeah. what is this boxing gloves are like dainty <laughs> they're for for sissies you know we yeah. should remove them and just go hard just gouge each other's eyeballs out without <laughs> yes why don't we have a boxing or mma where there's no rules whatsoever it'd be so awesome <laughs> it, they, we did have that it was a uh, kimbo slices home videos right we did yeah backyard wrestling that's yeah. right did you guys ever see old kimbo slice videos by chance I don't know what uh, that is. A couple Maybe? way, like, way back when they started. I think I did. Was it like an American thing? No, Jesus Christ, no. Kimbo Slice was like a really <laughs> well-known street fighter. He he looked like a psychopath. Like he had that weird yeah. haircut where he was like bald on top, but like long on the sides. And he was just a massive, ruthless force of nature. The one that really like kicked him off and made him kind of like a household name in fighting is he punched the guy so hard his eyeball popped out of his socket <sighs> in a street <sighs> fight. It was crazy. Oh and then he, he died, right? He did die, but he did actually have his MMA debut. <laughs> so he went from street fighting to professional, but he didn't do very well in professional. No, because there I, were rules. I, 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 exactly. <laughs> yeah. And I, I don't think he died from injuries, you know, sustained in, in from MMA. I think he died from something else unrelated, didn't he? Oh, yeah. It was completely unrelated. It shows how good he was. was. His, I think it was his heart. Yeah, yeah well, once he found that there were rules, he just couldn't live anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> couldn't take it. Need to see a man's world. eyeball again. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fucking... Yeah. I've never heard of him. Yeah, no, but so you he just had, a series, he just had a series of videos where there were no rules at all in his yep. fights. So it used to be kind of popular, not just with Kimbo Slice, but like street fight videos in general. So there'd be like little groups of people like this pocket on the internet that would just film like consensual street fights and it still exists like there's something called street I remember beefs that. which is kind mm. of the same thing but modern and kimbo there's slice some rules was just nuts that, what was that i think i've seen i've seen street beefs recently and there are rules yeah it's not like the because i remember when i was a kid yeah, i would watch kimbo slice and also just like i think it was called like bum fights or homeless fights and it was literally yeah. just it was just homeless men beating each other up <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. that was my a, first exposure that was a little different though bum fights was like a uh, production from a pretty sleazy guy who paid homeless people in food or whatever oh, to yeah. fight each other mm -hmm. for videos and That's then he went on dr phil <laughs> He like went he on Dr. Phil dressed as Dr. Phil, didn't he? He did, yeah. He dressed yeah. as Dr. Phil and got kicked off. <laughs> yeah, and Dr. Phil was so butthurt. He was like, you're fucking making a mockery of my daytime television show. Get him out of here. When all he did was show up dressed as Dr. Phil to make fun of him. Yeah, he had like a big statement he wanted to make about how like since he takes advantage of homeless people, he compared it to Dr. Phil taking advantage of uh, like mentally ill or struggling people. Mm -hmm. So his whole point was to like put a mirror to him or something yeah but i mean he's still a bad guy for doing yeah, that he is. yeah so it's, it's just yeah it's, it's just ex funny he's accepting to me, that though. he's a bad guy he's just saying this other guy yeah. is also yeah. bad it's, it's fun that's the funny part dr phil's entire show was built around taking like uh, people with issues and this guy obviously had issues and was doing terrible shit but as soon as he makes fun of dr phil he's like no get him out of my show i can't have this no yeah. it's too much like, well, it's because Dr. Phil uh, only makes fun of completely poor people. So as soon right. as someone has their shit <laughs> well, slightly Phil, together, he's like, I, I can't handle this. Dr. Phil's like a huge asshole as well. Like all the shit that happens with that fucking show. Like he's not even really? a doctor anymore. Yeah, I he's, watched, he's bad. He's a terrible what, is piece he actually of shit. Bad? I watched, I watched a, uh, what, what's his name? Joe, Joe Rogan's episode with him. And I quite liked mm. him in that. But so is what, he actually mm, an asshole outside of that? Yeah, what? So what's up with the show? Kaya, go ahead. No, oh, sorry, I was just asking about a show because he said all the things happening with it. 
Yeah, so Dr. Phil is not actually a doctor, and when people go on for his show for advice, they have to sign waivers that are like, this is not medical anything, this is just advice. You're just talking about your problems. This is not, like, designed to help you. But isn't that the same thing with, like, Judge Judy? Well, no, they, they actually handle yeah. actual civil, civil cases, if I remember correctly. But really? Dr. Phil, like, he, he basically just gives the worst advice ever most of the time like there mm -hmm. was a guy who went on there because his girlfriend was beating him and his advice to mm. the guy was you've done something wrong you need to accept these beatings or something yeah. it's fucking absurd <laughs> also, <laughs> also dr phil is paid off to shit to shill products so of he course. will he yeah, will so be we, a, well no but, we but he'll phil? he'll do it in the like like he'll be like if you're suffering from depression and you don't know what to do with life let me tell you this mobile game might be the most fun thing you've <laughs> ever played and it's like he's completely serious about it like the difference That's is we're not giving presumably psychological advice whereas he his entire show is built around finding sad and vulnerable people and pretending to have the answer you know mm -hmm. what i mean I, I just don't understand the kind of person that obviously they're sad and vulnerable, but to think that going on a daytime television show with millions of people watching so your problem can be broadcast to the world is going to solve your problem at all is, is just so strange. It feels like to me, a lot of it must be set up, right? Like yeah. when people are going yeah. on with a fake problem in order to get publicity. Like, yeah, they just want attention. I, I, can't, I can't imagine there's a single person that goes on there with a legitimate problem that they want solved. No, oh, I absolutely can't believe can that. Can you, like... I, I can really believe it. We've all had that one, like, bad arguments with our significant other, right? Can you imagine if a TV crew came up to you and said, Hey, can we televise this to national TV? You guys yelling at each other? Sure. No. <laughs> there are absolutely people that go on there expecting Dr. Phil to solve their problems 100%. Mm -hmm. But I think a lot of it is just looking for attention. For example, Danielle Brigoli. She was able to yep. turn a Dr. Phil episode into an extremely lucrative career. She made $50 million last year on OnlyFans, and it all started from Dr. Phil's show. Yep. It's crazy. It wasn't, wait, That's insane. Is she like underage? So he's a pimp. No. She's 18 now. The problem with this is that once it's televised, and especially to that audience, it's going to be dramatized no matter what you do. Like, any mm. problem that you have is going to lose some sense of legitimacy by going in front of a national audience and spectacleizing it. If you were to yeah, go on Dr. Phil what Alex, what would you ask him to help you with? <laughs> <laughs> How can I hit man harder? <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I hit man too hard, so maybe I gotta... Oh, <laughs> I be... oh he's nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't, I don't know. Maybe how could I get over a, a fear of wearing shoes or... Yeah, <laughs> oh, maybe that would be my question. <laughs> What, yeah. What's your fear with wearing shoes? What'd you say? What's your fear with wearing shoes? I mean, mostly that's just, it's just gross. Like you just kind of like, the more you wear shoes, the stinkier your feet get. That's what I found. So my logic is don't wear shoes. I think, I think that's just the Australian in you talking since we all wear thongs pretty permanently. I think yeah. it's not so much a fear. Thongs? I mean, it's just, just your blood. <laughs> Oh yeah, what, what do Americans call them? Fucking flip flops. Flip flops. Flip -flops. It's better yeah, than that's thongs. Way less cool. Yeah, thongs oh are something <laughs> way <laughs> different in America. You all sound like idiots. Uh, do you actually bro, have we have thongs I'm wearing a for your thong? ass, and yeah, <laughs> it's funny. Uh, yeah. The only thing that changes is the context. Like if you're outside and you're like, I'm wearing thongs. No, okay, it's when you okay. pluralize so it. It's for you your call... feet. Isn't the other thing called a g-string? Over here, no, it's, also, that it's also called well. a thong. What do you call the yeah. skinny underwear that women wear? Yeah, g strings, g string or a thong. You can say either, oh. but I think yeah, uh, you can, you can wear both popular. thongs at any time. You can wear two thongs, <laughs> <laughs> it's, not, it's not like one or the other. And it gets real confusing when you got two g strings on because then you say, I've got <laughs> thongs on, but then you got nothing on your feet, and people are like, What? <laughs> That's what he's talking about. I think, so we've had this argument before uh, a lot on this show. Alex, they make fun of Australian slang a lot because we have things like brekkie, you know, just we add IE onto the end of things, which is Sunnies, fine. I, chippies. Yeah, I, I, get, I get where they're coming from, but I think flip-flops is inherently more goofy than thongs. No, I mean, I like the word flip-flop because it's just so oh descriptive of what they are. You trade like, That is the... 
the biggest characteristic is them just flipping around and being fucking annoying. And you're like, yep, let's just call them that. They look like thongs on your feet, though. They got the little, like, G-string down your toe. <laughs> yeah, they do, but you hear the noise first, so it's like... True. Well, all right. Well, I'll, I'll meet you in the middle. Why don't we call them feet slappies? <laughs> is this, I mean, is I'm, this not, an I'm not opposed insight to that. into how Australians <laughs> exist when no one's looking. You can just come up with stupid. This names is for the stuff. discussions we have exactly. <laughs> <laughs> just like, mm, how can we slightly change this word to be unique to us? <laughs> I do think you're onto something with feet slappies, though. I think that could really start to be a like hit. feet slappies straight I'm up. Su- I'm surprised it doesn't exist already. Let me check. <laughs> I love that. I'm just gonna trademark it. <laughs> yeah, he's just gonna start <laughs> saying it until it catches on. <laughs> I mean, it, I'm gonna start. I'll start saying it as well if you do. We can convince a bunch of people. That'll convince the entirety of Australia. You guys should do it. Let's see if we can make it become the most popular slang for the for the next decade in Australia. We'll, we'll start calling them feet slappies. <laughs> Have you heard the New Zealand slang for for um, flip flops? No. What is it? I think they call them jandals. What? <laughs> Why? Yeah. It's the worst. It just makes me feel gross when I hear the word. It's I don't like get it. sandals crossed with something. Wait, I can probably Google that. It might not be true. Jandals? Yeah, it just jandals. sounds like someone lied to you. Yeah, maybe. I had one New Zealand friend, so he's probably lying. Oh, no. Oh, no, jandals are, actually... are different. No, no. Oh, jandals there is a particular like the Jesus. type of sandal. Yeah, yeah, the Jesus sandal. That's probably where it comes they're, from. They're a brand <laughs> called Jandal Sandals, I believe. Uh, okay. Well, I'm wrong. Ignore that. Whatever happened to Crocs? Are Crocs still big? They're falling out a little bit, but they're still pretty popular for the most part. Oh, yeah. They still have entire sections within shoe stores that are just all the different colored Crocs. Yeah, they're just not made fun of as much anymore. Now they're just kind of accepted and yeah. worn in secrecy. Just hipster. People don't really care. Are they comfortable? Never worn them. They're all right. Couldn't tell they're you. Right. They, my biggest problem is the same with other shoes is that because they're just completely made of plastic, like your feet just sweat like crazy. Oh. Like, and if you wear them long enough, you are literally sliding around inside your Crocs. Well, let's, yeah, horrible. let's, let's dump on Crocs specifically. Those shoes make your feet smell fucking horrendous. Yes. Like uh, my dad used to what wear Crocs. My dad used to wear Crocs and those things fucking, you could smell them across the room. They were fucking disgusting. <laughs> I'm not even exaggerating. I, we were in a car ride once and he was wearing his Crocs and he was like, I'm going to take my shoes off and get comfy. And the whole fucking car smelled like a stink bomb. It was horrendous. <laughs> like, I hate Crocs. I, I can't fucking stand They're them bad. just because they smell They're so bad. bad. And they're always so oversized as well. Like, they just make you look like a German tourist. Like, no matter <laughs> where you're from. It's great. So specific. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, the, we... the, worst, the worst feet thing for me, though, is I don't know how people can sleep with socks. Like, go to bed wearing mm. socks. That's never made sense to me. It feels so restrictive. Why would you wear socks well, to bed? Yeah. It's because we're from Australia. It's like, it does not get cold here. Imagine if you're, what, if you're actually in a cold place. Do you guys wear socks to sleep? It has to Sometimes. be really cold. Yeah, it'd have to be very cold. Yeah. Because the solution is well, if you're cold so in bed, you add, you add blankets. You don't add clothing. Yeah. That's just yeah. weird. I'm a big proponent of like the, the make my own problem scenario where you keep your room as cold as possible and no, then I just throw that. on a ton mm. of blankets. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, that's the that. best. It's super comfy. Yeah. My electricity bill is awful because of it though. <laughs> <laughs> Just I feels nice. Australia, though. Feels good. I don't get the opportunity to do that. Tiana puts it pretty high, and I just fucking sweat in the middle of the night half the what's, time. What's uh, the average for you, Charlie? That. What's it at? Usually like a 71 to sleep to. Uh, what's that in Celsius? How much is that, that, that in real units? Yeah, actual uh, units. Outside of freedom units, it's probably like... Oh, it's 21 degrees. Like 20, Jackson. yeah. I was going to say like 20. Oh, wait, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's, that's not bad. That's, that's kind. Of, that's kind of hot to sleep in, though. Like I'd like is it to be hot? colder. Yeah, it's almost twenty-two. No, that's like I like it. 18, I think that's like 19. a regular amount. Yeah, same. Oh well, wow. I consider hot like over twenty-seven. Oh, 27 have we degrees. all have oh, we all shit. gotten old enough now that we can like have our particulars with these things? Like, for example, if uh, we oh, have it on, take. if we have it on like seventy-four during the day, I'm like, fuck, 
it's hot as shit, I'm sweating, I'm dying. But if we just put it down one degree to 73, I'm like, oh, I feel great. It's so nice inside. I love <laughs> it. We're becoming dads with thermostats, I think. We we're are. Just transform into, like, we're focused on digital. Why does everyone in America use just aircon all the time? Why yeah, we do. It's very... Why don't you? You're in Australia. What? Well, do. we don't do it. Like, businesses do. But I, like, no. I don't, I don't... Do people do that in their house? Yeah, I do. Okay, maybe it's just a house rule of mine. No, I swear, everyone I know, no one does it unless it's like 30 degrees. Then people turn on their thermostat. Well, you should come but to like, Europe where they don't even have AC in their homes. That's... People always like... I like that. But it's awful. You know, here, when, we, when it gets too hot, the recommendation from the government is like, hey, if you don't want a heat stroke, turn on... A, oh, sorry, open all of your windows, I guess, and sit in front of the fridge. And when it's too cold, their recommendation is just dress warmer <laughs> because we can't afford Russian gas anymore. <laughs> and this is how Europeans live. They just fucking sweat. They just take it and live in a lower life just... standard. And they're used to it. Yeah. I mean, I think that's what Aussies do as well, usually. Well, I, a lot well, of the time. I, well, maybe, maybe it's different in cities. Maybe because I don't live in a city. But like... Where do, where do you live? Sunshine Coast, just north of Brisbane. Okay. Um, yeah. And yeah, I, I, like even during winter, I'll have the air conditioning on. I, can, I, I don't like it over like 20 degrees. As soon as it gets over 20 degrees, uh, th this is why I don't, this is like my least favorite thing about Australia because, you know, it gets extremely hot here and I can't yeah. deal with it. I can't deal with it. I get like heat headaches or something. And so oh, I, I need I need to be like cryo cooled or something. <laughs> Same. I dude. love it. That's why I loved going to Florida. I was just like, this is... Exactly oh, the same. You're sick, it's sick, man. Fucking you great. are sick. You're it's like so 30 degrees. Yeah. Just yeah. 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 It's it amazing. So fucking bad. <laughs> and you've been twice. Yeah. The twice. The second one wasn't so bad. When did I come during that period? I think it was. I think it was during winter for that one. But the first one I came in uh, summer, and it was awful. <laughs> did not like it. I've got nothing Hello, to defend just... that, but I do have something else I really want to talk about. If you guys don't mind. Hmm. Tell us. Yep. All right, I'll just blurt it out. Today's episode is sponsored by Hani. How do Ooh. you feel about online shopping? How Hate often it. do you do it? How often do you feel like you have a promo code ready to go for checkout? I'll give you the answer. Never. No one remembers promo codes. Come on. There's like a million of them. The only one that you ever need to remember, and knowing our audience, I'm sure they do, is when you use official on products. But beyond that, what like look at generated random internet promo codes. It's like summer save twenty two, or or hot deals nine nine nine. It's like who the fuck remembers these little phrases? It's stupid. Don't remember anything. Use a robot. Use Honey, which is a free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one to your cart for over thirty thousand stores online. Can you click a mouse? I'm going to assume that you can listening to this podcast. Maybe you have a phone and you have to tap a screen. The point is, can you use your hand and fingers or I don't know if you're like not able to do that. Your assistant appendage or your assistant to push something <laughs> then you can use honey. It's that simple. All you have to do is make sure that you don't already have honey. If you don't already have honey, then you're straight up missing out on free savings that installs in just a few seconds by getting honey you'll be supporting us and yourself i never recommend something i don't use get honey for free at joinhoney.com official you're just gonna go shopping you're gonna get free promo coupon codes and you save money all you gotta do is go to joinhoney.com official and you're gonna say wow i think i can remember just one code that's amazing what if i told you what if I told you that one code is going to get you something else, too? Remember how I said, okay, let Honey remember all the 45,000 other codes. Remember the one code, official. Well, what if you said, I want to use that code for more things. I don't want to limit myself. Well, that's why you're going to use FitBot. Look, ah. I was at the gym last night. Not exaggerating. I was there alone listening to, like, space metal, and it felt cool because I was, like, isolated from the world, and I was, like, in a little rocket ship that made me get big and muscular. And I've seen all my friends at the gym. I've seen Charlie at the gym. I'm sure many of you out there listening know of Matt, 
our little manager man who helps with these sponsorships. I've seen him at the gym. I've seen Caleb, who's a man featured in Charlie's videos at the gym. I've seen all these friends at the gym. Jackson, they have gyms in Australia. They probably call them big lifty time houses. And that's mm -hmm. fine. It doesn't matter what you call your gym. Because you can use FitBot at the gym. It doesn't matter what your goal or experience level is. FitBot is going to help you find your best workout. You're not going to need to take shortcuts. You're not going to use little bullshit things. You're not going to have little fad diets. You're not going to do like dumb exercises that don't make any sense. It's just going to have an algorithm that uses data from you and your body to create a dynamic fitness plan that's going to keep track of your goals, equipment, fitness level, and workout history. They got body weight workouts as well. Some of you can't go to a gym or can't afford one. It doesn't matter. Do you have a body? Then you can use that weight, big boy and or girl. FitBod also has a new app that's easy to use, and it integrates with Apple Watch, Wear OS, smartwatch apps like Apple Health, Strava. It's just so simple. Remember that code I gave you earlier, official? Well, if mm -hmm. you want to get 25% off of your subscription, try out the app for free. Sign up at FitBod.me slash official. Build your fitness habit and become a better version of yourself with FitBod. That's 25% off of your subscription when you sign up at FitBod.me slash official. And I can hear the chanting. I can hear yes. the rumbling. I can hear the there boom, comes. boom, clap. Whoa. Boom, boom, clap. Because everyone says, we want a third ad with code yes. official. Yes. Just what is it? Love Give that. it to me. Just do it. Okay. All right. Calm down. You don't have to that. yell at me. You know those days when you're at the coffee shop and they're out of cold brew that you want? Or like when your air conditioner breaks and it's super duper hot? My God, I know. Life can be hard. But something you can be hard in is me undies. <laughs> yes! And you're nice. going to be able to take a break this summer with me undies underwear. All four official boys wear me oh, undies. Yeah. Let me let me let you in a little secret. Let me bring you in close. Let me put the mic too close to my face for this. I've discovered that like I, I normally wear boxer briefs because it holds my junk in place, and that's really convenient and nice, feels good. Same for the official boys. But sometimes when I go to bed, I want like regular boxers. Like a little little looser, not really holding stuff in there. But you know, sometimes you want to let things flop around, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You want you want less control, let things flop around, but still want to be wearing something cozy. That's why I not only have like a full repertoire of boxer briefs from me on these, I also have a full repertoire of boxers from them. And they're just so comfy. They're just so soft. They're just so I, Oh my god. I can't explain to you how comfortable it is. Every single goddamn night. I bought like 20 pairs of black ones because I'm boring, but they also have tons of fun patterns. They have they merchandise. So They're so comfortable. They really are. They have That's merchandise and branded patterns. I think Batman's in there. I love Batman. I should get Batman on my penis. Look, <laughs> whether it's summer and you're all sweaty and you want their light, breathable micromodals to cool off, or it's like winter and you want comfy, warm ones to sleep in. It doesn't matter. They're going to have every single variety and every single size for every single place and every single fun brand that you can think of. Me Undies has a great offer for you. For any first-time purchasers, you can get 15% off if you sign up for their free-to-join membership. You can apply that 15% off to their already discounted membership prices. To get 15% off of your first order and a 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to MeUndies.com slash... If I had just one person listening to this say official out loud right there, I've accomplished my goal. MeUndies.com slash official. I'm done reading ads now. Well, thank, thank you. you to those sponsors. Also, does just a side note. Every yeah, time. he does that every, every week. Yeah, he's great at <laughs> Just in real life <laughs> as well, just just breaks out into an ad break. <laughs> I'm you on the street. Yeah. Yeah. Sit there for 10 minutes and listen to it. At every funeral. <laughs> 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 it's part you, of my come up, you come up to him with five dollars and something to promote and he's got your back <laughs> oh, oh, Jackson, Jackson, I didn't raise my prices it's 250 come on <laughs> I, meant, I meant five dollars for all three spots of course oh right um, I give a bulk no, yeah. discount that's very, right very yeah, fair. yeah 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 uh, just a side note so in our Patreon discord the live chat we had people playing official podcast bingo with a whole bunch of like pre-selected things. Every single ad we just did was in the bingo. They had three ads in there. It was honey, me on these and Holy shit. So they, yeah. they got us down I to the science. That. 
It's crazy. That's fucking right. awesome. Yeah. What I wanted to talk about today, though, was, uh, Alex, your body. How did you get in shape? Like, genuinely. Like, what's your routine? Because you're, you're a, you're a good looking dude. Uh, well, thank you. Thank you for that. And I'm sure you guys are all good looking dudes as well, if I could see you. Um, but, uh, I don't know. I think I've, I've been lucky in that I just, I'm just super ADHD. So I just love moving around and doing things. So before boxing, I did just heaps of rock climbing and mountain biking. Mm -hmm. That'll do um, it, yeah. Rock and I do exercise so just like, yeah. Oh, it's fucking amazing. It's so much... I used to do gym before rock climbing, like just lifting heavy weights. And I was like, wait, I can lift heavy shit and solve a puzzle and have fun and meet cool people all at the same time. It's like, yeah, it's amazing. And without the toxic community of guys just being like, got to lift big, you know, it's like it's beautiful. <laughs> um, so yeah, just did, did, did a lot of that. And then yeah, mountain biking. And then when I got into boxing, it was just, yeah, you know, doing anything for five five times a week for two hours is gonna get you fucking fit. Like, yeah. But that kind of like variation, do you do you stick to all of them or do you like shuffle in between hobbies a lot? Um, well, because I was doing boxing, I did have to stop everything else because it was like, with most sports, I get injuries, um, and with rock climbing, you get some particularly bad ones, specifically in your fingers, like popping, popping tendons and like fucking up like in your in your um elbows getting tendonitis so i just had i had to stop everything while i was doing boxing but i'm definitely gonna get back into into rock climbing and um and spear fishing is also something i love which is that's like probably not that good for exercise but it's like yeah. a, you know i mean you're still exercise. throwing something heavy and then dragging it back it's like it's more active than regular fishing I I love it. You don't know how spear fishing works. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> how does spear fishing work? Then? Is it like a gun? You've got, yeah, you got a gun. You put underwater. Oh, I mean, it's it's fucking. Lame. Well, yeah. In Jackson's defense, I also imagined the same thing. Just like very yeah, primitive. Yeah, you out there on a, like a wooden raft with like your yeah. shirt off and holding like this Full kind of spear. I mean, that does sound fucking fun. I'm gonna, Wait, I'm gonna why, give that a that, try. Why is that not real? What, what do you actually do? Tell me what spear. So you've got you've now. just got it's you've just got a gun underwater that you kind of oh. load back this rubber on into some like notches. It's like an underwater crossbow, um, oh, and yeah. then you swim up to the fish and just shoot them in the head. <laughs> <It's fucked up. laughs> underwater gun violence exists. <laughs> it's not really like a like a sport. It's just more like a, <laughs> yeah, a murder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just gets rid of blood loss. It's because Australians we don't we're not allowed guns, so you have to just shoot fish instead. Like. <laughs> with spears I, yeah I, I, Fair well, enough. It, it does it does still sound more active than just regular fishing because you've got to be swimming underwater I assume there's, there's it's that fun. element to it it's fucking fun and it feels a bit more like even as well like like I've never gone regular <laughs> hunting but with regular hunting it's like you know you can blow a fucking deer away from I don't know 100 meters 200 meters and it can't even see you but spear fishing like you have to be pretty close you have to be like you have to see the fear in their eyes <laughs> exactly it's more personal see them going no <laughs> how is that well, fair you, these fish don't have spear guns well, you should make, <laughs> it, like... make it more personal go knife fishing <laughs> yeah, you that, should give him a weapon yeah <laughs> I mean, it's called sharks. That's that's how it's true, even. True, true. For the Have millions you, uh, of fish we kill, one man dies every year from a shark. It's it's completely even. Are you allowed to spearfish sharks? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think there's certain think so. sharks, but you actually get in trouble. Like if you shoot a great white in Australia, like you'll get you'll get fined. You could probably oh. get prison time. For what if shooting it's in self defense? I mean, how do they prove that, though? Then it's a he says, she says kind of argument. Yeah, you but have the, to shark ask the shark can't great white shark has to go to court. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's my well, word against the I sharks. I mean... Exactly. Oh, they're vulnerable, uh, not endangered. They are. Yeah, I don't think we're allowed to shoot them, though. Stingrays, <laughs> though. We can shoot stingrays. Yeah, it's revenge yeah. for the crocodile hunter. That sad. Apparently that happened. Apparently after Steve Irwin died, I think there was stories of just teenagers going around and just murdering Steve. Yeah. Which is surprised. pretty fucked up. The Stingray yeah, is kind of mean. There was one one bad apple among the Stingray bunch. <laughs> oh, they <laughs> all get executed. Wasn't it Steve Irwin's fault? Like he uh, like startled it so it barbed or something? It wasn't exactly uh, like yeah, it was out yeah, for yeah. blood. Yeah, yeah, no, they're not. I don't think they're particularly aggressive creatures, right? 
No, they're pretty no, like you have The to... irony being that if Steve Irwin survived the attack, that's the last thing he'd want people to do. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, but he, he must have been doing something stupid. Like, the only time I've had them kind of, like, throw their barb is, like, you have to step on them with all your weight. So, it's like, I don't know how he got hit in the heart. Did he just be like, I'm going to lie on top of this thing? Like, it's... <laughs> it was extremely maybe unlucky. it was something sinister like, maybe he had a maybe little, it was suicide. A little ocean fetish mm. I don't, I mean, he I, was I, bored I, of his show he wanted out i think what <laughs> happened was he was swimming with them and he like i remember he was like grabbing onto the back of it or something and then it barbed it's been a oh, long shit. time but it was something like he grabbed the back of it I, and I don't know if he like like tickled it or groped it or something but yeah like barbed when he when he was behind him. i really d i really doubt that he grabbed it or anything like that i i think he only did that with um like in proper environments what yeah he would i would be surprised no it was a mistake he made. Everything. yeah well yeah i think so i think he, it was probably he definitely manhandled animals no he, he did but i think they were in yeah there's there's you know obviously he was jumping on crocodiles and shit but it was definitely in more controlled environments where he had a whole team there. Though I guess he did have a team with the um, Stingray as well, right? Yeah, I think so. I think he literally had like doctors on board as well in preparation for that exact scenario. <laughs> Maybe he was trying to like film how to like fix a Stingray Bob attack. That's probably it. I've, you know what I find right interesting, and I've, I've noticed this a lot, in pretty much every video where, like, something goes wrong, it goes wrong in, like, the worst way, but it, the odds of it hitting his heart were so low. Like, I have to imagine it has to be one of the first times that's ever happened in the history of our species, getting barbed mm. in the heart by a stingray. Like, there were just so <laughs> many other places that could have hit, and yet it was in his heart. And I see that a lot with, like, other videos, like, you know... Someone hits a baseball, goes really far, and somehow hits someone in the head. You know, like, it's always, like, a headshot or, like, the worst possible mm. spot to get hit, but it seems so low odds. Blows my, it, blows my mind. Well, it's because well, those are the clips that are shared. You know, if someone yeah, exactly. hits a ball oh, that true. goes really far and someone films it but nothing happens, why would you post you it or it. spread it around? It's like, who cares? Yeah, I was going to say that. Yeah. It's true. It's true. I didn't even think of that. <laughs> <laughs> like, who are all these unlucky people? If all I watch is home funniest videos, how does this keep happening yeah. to every single person? They Why keep is falling it in all of these funny videos, everyone always falls down the stairs instead of normally walking up them? It doesn't make sense. <laughs> Why, these Why is there a dangerous. sound effect? Why is there a sound effect whenever someone falls over? I don't understand. <laughs> Charlie is right to a certain degree, though, that the odds... It, it's interesting in that particular case, like how many things, how many specific things had to happen for that Stingray to barb him directly in the heart? Like, but it, that's, it's that's like, like winning the lottery. He's been, he's been stung by so many other animals in different locations that didn't yeah. kill him. So it is a matter of time before he hits him in the heart. And then that's the one you're talking about. Yeah, like, I don't know what you guys Stingray are. stabbed him in the arm. You act as if there's astronomical odds that there could something go wrong where a guy goes around molesting wildlife in all forms, even the most dangerous ones. Like. How the fuck does Steve Irwin die, but, like, the wild boys don't even get that badly hurt throughout their whole show? Who's the, wild boys? Who's the wild boys? Yeah, I don't know who they are. Uh, Steve-O and Chris Pontius from Jackass uh, did, like, yeah. three oh, right. seasons of their animal show, and, like, yeah, they got hurt, but, like, nothing life-changing or anything. Well, they didn't do anything with stingrays. I think that's why. True. Fuck me. <laughs> Everyone knows. <laughs> Would have been over if they did. Have Have you guys ever been stung by an a um a electric stingray? No, I've never <laughs> even seen an electric stingray. <laughs> <laughs> They're so strange. So I had it like where I've been stung by them twice, and it's so strange because they hide like maybe they're not under the sand, but they're just on top of the sand, and you just be walking. And when you step on them, you get stung. But it's really funny because you you have no idea what happens. Suddenly, you're just shaking. You're just like... <laughs> and it just feels like you've just been struck by a force field. But it puts you into fight or flight immediately. So you're just like, what's happening? Where did this come from? Like, why, why do I feel like this? And it takes like two <laughs> seconds to realize like, oh, something's attacking my foot. Like, it's such a strange feeling. Uh, does it hurt? Or is it just confusing? Uh, it's, it's more just like a... It's not like a taser. It's not too sharp. It's just like a kind of like your foot starts shaking and gets a bit numb. 
Is it like the equivalent to an electric fence? No, it's more like have you ever stuck your hand in like the 240 volt, like the, the power socket? It feels more like oh, that. Oh, of course, yeah. yeah. All the time. Yeah, it's more like a violin <laughs> shape. Let me get a fork. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah let's try it now. Yeah, let me know. <laughs> God, you're such a stronger man than we are. I know if that happened to me, I would be like immediately rushing to the hospital to get analyzed for like an out of beat heart rhythm or something. Or just like some catastrophic disaster. It is scary. I already knew that it wasn't that bad because all my friends have been stung by them as well. So I was like, oh yeah, this is the, you know, the electric stingray. It's fine. This is the Typical attitude Tuesday. that leads to something like what happened to Steve Owen happening, by the way. <laughs> yeah. I feel like we're talking to like... A descendant of Steve Owen or clone of him. Just hey, don't go stingrays. Well. well, yeah, but I've never been stepping on stingrays. You make it sound like I'm doing it on purpose. I'm not doing it on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> You're going out of your way. I'm too afraid. <laughs> I'm like too Mario. afraid to step on the the bottom. I'm too afraid to step on the bottom of the ocean floor due to like stonefish. Me too. Same it's one wrong move. Mm. I, yeah, yeah. For me, it's mostly because it's just yucky with all the fucking seaweed and shit. It so is. If yes. I need to put my foot down, I look for a very sandy spot or one that is like stony but looks clean. Well, even like like he just said, even that, like Alex just said, even that's not safe because there could be an electric stingray hiding under that sand. That's that's exactly where they hide is the little clearings well, in the on sea, your in the weird seaweed. beaches. You know, the rest of the planet is infested <laughs> with fucking electric stingrays and box jellyfish. <laughs> on most beaches, I just swim. I don't dodge danger. <laughs> do you? Are, are we the only country, Alex, with uh, with stonefish, or do other countries have them? I think we're the only ones with stonefish. There might yeah. be some variant of them. So, Kaya, I'm assuming then if you don't stand on like the clearings you stand on like rocks or you try to find paths through navigating through rocks or whatever anything mm -hmm. that's not an open clearing that's more dangerous over here because stonefish look like stone and if you stand on them you die immediately <laughs> basically <laughs> yeah we've talked about those before on the podcast those bad boys are scary they're they're the things i'm most scared of like i don't i don't care about like stingrays or or sharks or or uh, lionfish or anything, but anything that looks like a rock that can kill you immediately, I'm terrified of. That's okay, horrifying. so couldn't you both... <laughs> Do you have them in the sun sign? Sorry. Do you know about Alex and Jackson, like, couldn't you solve all of these problems if you wore Crocs in the water while you're swimming? Don't yeah, get stung, don't so die. Unhydrodynamic. It just sucks. Have you ever well, tried Kaya, to walk you... Crocs in the water? It's like buckets on your feet. Wait, wait, Kaya, wait, wait, would you wait, rather wait. be safe or fashionable? <laughs> 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 what did you say then, Alice? I couldn't hear you. You cut out. Uh, I was just saying that it's impossible to walk in the water with Crocs. Like, I have tried that many times. And it's like, they, they're like buckets on your feet. They're like parachutes. It's, oh. it's yeah. very hard to walk. <laughs> also, it's just uncomfortable. If I'm going to die, I'd rather be comfortable. We have rock shoes as well. Like, I do wear those when I'm just going through mangroves. They're just, just like sh kind of neoprene shoes with like a bit of rubber on the bottom. And they're great. Makes sense. Yeah. No, nope. I wouldn't be walking around any Australian beaches without like no. full body armor. No, no, <laughs> no. I went to a fucking water park recently, and even then I was like, oh, God, this, who knows what's well, in that water? Just, Fuck that's this. just disgusting. <laughs> Can we yeah, all agree water worse. parks suck ass? Yes. Uh, no, no, no. Volcano Bay is pretty fucking amazing. Wait, why do you think? But it's just pools of like children's piss and shit. Not only is it just children's piss and shit, it's the wa the fucking actual, like, slides and everything have just enough water so you don't de-glove yourself going down them, but it's still so yes. painful. It's so bad. You can feel the ridges of the slide as well sometimes on your oh, spine, you're just like, Ugh. It's I so like it. I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> I, have to, I, I like it. I get a fresh water coat of skin. In I don't like know why the rides. Years. I don't know the rides. <laughs> it just feels so dirty. I just don't like how dirty everything feels. Yeah. That that I had to get over. Uh, so Volcano Bay has great rides. Like normally, I think water parks' problems is they're boring. They like, go, oh, "Wow, is a, this a another slide. sponsorship?" What's that? Is this another sponsorship? No, no, no. <laughs> no. Okay, fuck no. Do you think we're that big? No, 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 no. Um, Wait, no wild Bay, sponsors yeah. our podcast. Yeah. Wait, you but guys no, got uh, went a wild over there as well? Well, we used to. I got. I'm pretty sure they all got shut down because they were so unsanitary. <laughs> <laughs> they came to Australia. <laughs> well, they've been here since the 70s. 
But you guys uh, actually still have Wet and Wild. <laughs> yeah, we've got one left. We got one on the Gold there. Coast, which to be fair is extremely dirty. I hate the Gold Coast. Yeah, and I just don't trust water slides or, or rides after what happened at Dreamworld. Yeah. Did you guys hear that? Oh, man. No. Yeah, what happened? No. Tell us. This, but it was kind of like a white, uh, white water kind of rafting ride. And at the end of this thing where you're in this big tire, there's like a conveyor belt that kind of like brings you back up to the platform where you get off. And I think what happened is one of the boats flipped over and chucked five people into this conveyor belt of gears. And fi- I think five people just got mushed up and died. Oh, yeah, they did. Oh, fuck. It was horrifying. Yeah. This is only a few... I've I, I definitely talked about it on it the like show before. It was like two years ago. It's fucked. Yeah, it happened... Well, I had family that worked at Dreamworld. Uh, oh, and wow. I used to visit there like every every month because I was born on the Gold Coast. Um, and yeah, I, I've ridden that ride plenty of times. Whoa. So it was, it was horrifying Goddamn. to see what happened. Yeah, so you were right. Like the, um, so the, the, the ride apparatus, the thing that you sit in, it's like a giant wheel. And to get up to the first drop, it goes up a conveyor belt, obviously. But the conveyor belt malfunctioned and then the, the vehicles got jammed in the conveyor belt and, and lifted up, throwing the people out of the ride vehicle into the open gears below the water. So the water was still there, uh, but basically like the motion pushed them into the gears in the conveyor belt where they all got like jammed up and torn to pieces, essentially. Just... Jesus Christ. Ow. It Sounds was like the worst way to die. It was like Final Destination tier shit. It was horrific. That's fucking horrible. Is Dreamworld I'm surprised still Dreamworld's, open? Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised. I was going to say, it's, I'm surprised it's still open because they had to close down for like a full year to, uh, you know, go on their investigation and shit and they paid a bunch of money. Because I just looked it up. There was an, uh, another accident. Girl 8 is left with horrific genital injuries after an accident at Dreamworld and it looks like it's the same kind of thing. So it looks like oh they still that, that have fixed their, their no that trip. ride definitely got removed. But which 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 ride was this one? I didn't hear about that. Uh, one. Fully six ride. Which one, sir? Yeah, they just say she, uh, she went on the fully six ride, which is where it happened. Never heard of it, but I'll look it up. Yeah, I, I didn't hear about well, that. Maybe one. it's been removed you know, after. The... That's, That's fucking fucked. terrifying. I mean, do you guys remember this one's kind of kind of old now? I think it's like a decade. There was a water park, I don't remember where, but uh, on the ride, it was a big slide, a kid got decapitated because it was uh, so poorly made. So he I got saw his head- I YouTube video on that. Yeah, he got his head chopped off and it slid down the rest of the slide. <laughs> that's fucking funny. It was, funny. Get chopped it was off. Are you sure that's wild. not like You're a laughing. Nickelodeon horror movie? Oh, there was someone in the chat posted it. It was Schlitterbahn. That was the name of yeah, it. Yeah, we've talked about that one before. That's yeah. the one with the loop, right? Yep, uh, well, I don't know if it was a full loop, I don't recall, but yeah, it was a, a wild little water slide. Can there be a half loop in a ride? Uh, that would just be a launch, right? Yeah, probably. A, that, that seems like it'd be like <laughs> Roller Coaster yeah. Tycoon. I, I don't think it's <laughs> like the same thing. It would have to be a full loop then, that's what I'm saying though. If there was any kind of like loop in there, it would have to be a full one, otherwise it's just a ramp. <laughs> That, yeah, that's insane. That's why I don't trust rides and stuff. It's just, I d- uh, yeah, dude, it's I just, don't. I hate rides. I don't trust them. When it's and you're just feeling a robot like throw you around like that, like on a roller coaster, it just feels fucked. And especially when yeah. you know it's like some poorly paid worker. <laughs> that's what I was like, going to say. Some set up jumping kid. castles. Right. I yeah. used to set up jumping castles and rides, and I had no idea what I was doing. And I was just like, yep, good good to go. Don't die. <laughs> it's like bits would fall the off worst, during the thing. Like. The worst ones are the ones that are like at, you know, like school, uh, what are they called? The school carnivals Fairgrounds. and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah the ones That's that they literally like put up and tear down like once a week. Like there's no yeah. way that's safe. Yeah, we. I would do ones where I had to arrive in the morning, set them up and then tear them down at night. I like some of them I didn't even know how to build. So I was literally making it up with my mates as we would go along. We're like, oh, I think this bolt looks like this goes in here to hold this thing together. <laughs> it's like, fucking Christ. It was well, just horrendous. The thing is though, like Alex is smart. So that he probably yeah. got it right and even better still, than the manual. Uh, <laughs> no, there were plenty of times like mid ride, like on the teacups or something, I would just see a loose bolt, uh, a loose nut. And I was like, oh, 
that should not be there. And I would just go and just pick it up and take it away before the customers see it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> you were complacent. You were trying to hide the evidence that anything went wrong. I mean, I was getting paid 18 bucks an hour. I was like, I don't care. <laughs> like, <laughs> That's the kind of uh, job experience that'll get you a job at Dreamworld, so... No, that's right. Apply. <laughs> yeah. Wait, did we figure out how you got your body? Because <laughs> that would be nice. Uh, Was it just hobbies? Just a lot of exercise, I guess. Just rock rock climbing's definitely it. Ooh, good choice. Um, rock climbing's great. It was um Charlie had a good you had a good gym set up at your your mm-hmm. warehouse. It's yeah. amazing. Thank you. Is yeah, that they- all for just for working out yep that's for anyone that wants to use it andrew uses that pretty much every day i think he goes in kind of late do you uh do you remember when i was doing that ad and i said i was at the gym yesterday i was at the warehouse oh yeah i'm going again today very cool very cool fuck yeah let's all go get decapitated on slides let's do it what do you guys now? think is the most oh. dangerous ride to go on? Like, just bar none. Because I would definitely say water-based rides, like at water parks. Why? Just because yeah, that's where why. most of the... So back to shitting on water parks. I think, like, <laughs> if you just... I'm sure you've all been on those big slides at water parks, the ones that are, like, a thousand meters, and it's kind of slow, and then it'll speed up sometimes. But it's more of, like, mm. a scenic tour of the park. Mm-hmm. You know mm-hmm. what I'm talking about? Kind of, yeah. Well, those like bar, well, they're not bars, but like the slide itself is super narrow. And when it speeds up a little bit, they give like a little extra height on the sides, but you could easily just fly right over that if you're not paying attention. Like if you fall asleep on that, like a uh, like lazy water slide or something, you could easily just go right over the side of it. Like it, it blows my mind that more people don't die on that shit. It just seems so unsafe and you're relying on people's survival instincts and like general need to be safe. But the second someone's not paying attention, you can just fall right off. You are right. Cause that's kind of the only water slides are the only rides where you're the actual person's unrestricted as well. Cause I'm roller coasters. Yeah. You're strapped in. You can't go outside of the zone you're meant to be in, but a water slide, if you're just bigger or taller or do something stupid, you can behave. Yeah, you, can, you can actively try I'm- to get out of that. Sorry, go ahead. I'd I'd agree on water slides also because of the water element. I mean, drowning very possible just from mm. whatever <laughs> you just happens. Just go down the slide face down. <laughs> down <into> the slide. <laughs> Drown before you hit the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be the way drink you all the water. I was gonna say the downside with those slides is also if you turn it into a full tube, then sometimes people get stuck because like a couple of fat asses will want to slide down, and one of them gets stuck, and then they all just uh, you know bump into each other. And now you have that dilemma. Oh, and there's water. That's another thing. It also has to rely on the employees being like attentive because mm. you could accidentally send like two people down at the same time and then they collide somewhere in the middle of it. Mm-hmm. That happened to me when I was a kid. Uh, there's a water park in South Florida called Rapids Water Park. And they have these old school yellow slides that are like built into the side of a hill. And uh, I think you sit on like a mat and it helps you go really fast because it takes away the friction. But I lost mine halfway down the slide, and then this fucking dad just came behind me and plowed right into <laughs> oh, me at no. the end of the slide. <laughs> so good. Yeah. Was he apologizing? We laughed it off. It was fine. Okay, that's pretty good. Yeah. I think, I think the most dangerous ride, and it's not even a ride. I think it's probably those fucking wave pools. I feel like so many people drown in those. Hmm. Well, they cram bad. people into those. Yeah, that's just because there's so many people there, right? Isn't it mainly kids who drown in those? I think so, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah kids I, aren't uh, better swimmers. Yeah. Yeah, not I've, us but adults. I, that was the question. Swim. I feel like I've heard of so many people dying in those. And I guess they're still at theme parks, so they kind of count, right? I, I, uh, it's I, it's all confirmation bias at the end of the day. You only hear about the accidents. You don't hear about how many days go by where nothing goes wrong. But I hear more, I, I hear more tales of people dying in those wave pools than any other ride. So comparatively, yeah, even hear, by that so. logic, probably because they're more popular as well. There's more people in them. Like every time the ride is open, there's like what 200 people in that. So it's also true. Could be. 
Who knows? I don't know. Hey, uh, are you going to build like a theme park ride or something in your YouTube <laughs> career? I feel like you'll get there eventually. I mean, I feel like you could do it. You could do it. a roller coaster would be pretty fun to make, like a really scuffed, shitty roller coaster. That would be yeah, fucking awesome. <laughs> I've actually, I've actually seen YouTube channels that do make like back backyard roller coasters, and that shit always looks so fun to make. <laughs> Have you seen there's something that's kind of interesting? I can't make it, but maybe I could make a mini version of it for like animals. But there's a, it's called like a euthanasia roller coaster. Oh, yeah. Have, oh, you, yeah. have you seen that? Yeah. yeah. And it just, it's like loops. I think it gets like progressively smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And it just pulls the blood away from your brain and then you die. Yeah. So maybe. It's just, I, I think, I think what it is, it's, it's like a big uh, wind up or a big ramp and then immediately straight down. And then the straight downness leads into just a bunch of loops uh, loops that eventually get smaller and smaller and smaller so maybe I could make a mouse trap like that it's like a mouse <laughs> trap and they get strapped into a roller coaster and then euthanized by speeding around I, that might be a, that'd be a banger video it would be a little controversial <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm doing it I'm doing it dead by the end of it <laughs> well you'd have, yeah the rats would have to like sign a paper saying they want to die or something <laughs> yeah they're ready to die just get rats with like terminal illnesses or something get a know. doctor to sign them off as well yeah this rat's ready to die <laughs> what do you think is going to be right. like your grandest creation do you yeah, have was, any like yeah. major plans for something absolutely wild well, so that one of the reasons I wanted to come to America besides the boxing match was to just do shit that I'm not allowed to do at all in Australia. And I've potentially got something lined up the end of next month, which is pretty insane. Almost too insane. I don't know if I should say it now. When does this podcast get released? In a week's time. Right now. Well, yeah, technically we're in front of a live audience, so... <laughs> Actually, no, I'm not going to say it. <laughs> I'm not going to say it. Can you it's give like us hints at least? How... It's got to be, it it's got to be gun related. Draw us a it picture is. and post oh. it. It involves, ah, oh. it's okay. So it's similar to a Michael Reeves video, but much, much, much worse. Sick. Fuck. Dude is going to go around executing fish with nine millimeter guns. I am. <laughs> We've upgraded from spears. Um, yeah, no, I can't really say because then it might ruin the chances of actually doing the video. No, you it's yeah, like no, it's but, probably but, probably illegal. Wait, everywhere. wait, why why would it so, ruin the chances of you doing the video? Are you going to go to jail if you say it? Uh, no, cuz I'm just doing it with other people and it's just like they all have to agree to do it as well. Um, and potentially like the more people that know about it is is bad and my plan is like do it then release the video once I leave the country. <laughs> Smart. That's nice. Okay. That's exciting. I like that. It's very bad boy. <laughs> um, but then I'll be in Australia, um, the stricter country where there's more rules. So I don't know if that logic is good, but yeah, maybe maybe Australia is going to deport you once they see what you've done. Back to America, yeah. He commits um, like an actual act of terrorism over here or something. <laughs> domestic <laughs> terrorism. Yeah, exactly. I just assassinate a politician. That's the video. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. William Osmond builds a homemade microwave emitter and he just blows up some guy in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> William, they're on to us. Run. <laughs> <laughs> so how long are you in America for? Because you've been here for about three, two, two or three weeks now, I think, right? I think I've been here for almost a month now. Oh, wow. um, but I, I mean, I'm just going to try and just do as much dangerous shit as I can do here. Hopefully get like a one or two videos out um, and then head on back to Australia. But I know it could be like a month and a half. Um, Which place do you prefer living uh, Australia or America. Yeah. Or anywhere else, I guess. Um, <laughs> uh, I mean, America's got some great things about it. I love it that you guys can just do so much stuff here. Um, that's quite nice. And everyone seems to be here. Like, in Sydney, when people are like, oh, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm a YouTuber. People are like, you can make money from that? And then it's like, it's literally the only YouTuber in Sydney. <laughs> um, <laughs> but for some reason, why, I don't know, why do you guys have so many YouTubers here? And like, LA just packed there's just hundreds of it's like the oh that's just uh, LA probably everyone goes there once they're an influencer yeah. but it's yeah. like, we've also got a population of 400 million people like yeah it's probably a lot of people it, actually yeah. but um there's also like you I, I did not expect the amount of kind of 
uh, especially LA, just the amount of homeless people and just people that are just fucking, you know, almost insane, like drug fucked people. Um, that's pretty intimidating to see. So I don't know. I think that cancels, it cancels out the good things about America. <laughs> There yeah. is definitely a lot of uh, homeless people, especially in LA. It's I sad. think I could, I think I could sum it up by saying I think Australia is a nicer place or a more comfortable place to live, but there's more to do in America. Yes, that's that's good. how it feels like to me. Yeah, like in Australia, there's nowhere I feel scared. Like you can literally go anywhere and you're safe. In America, it's like there are places I'm just like, you, you feel terrified walking around, which is a weird feeling to have. Like yeah, I've never yeah. experienced that before. No, I definitely, yeah, I agree with that. What do you mean you agree with that, Jackson? When you I were in America that. both times, I don't think you ever left our side. All we did was go to restaurants. <laughs> it was scary in those restaurants. Who knows what would have happened? <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? I like how you're relating to Alex, who is like probably going to like dumpsters and cow tipping or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And all you did was go to yeah, restaurants. With those people. No, you don't understand, Charlie. Until you come to an actually safe country, you don't understand. Well, what do you do in your safe country, Jackson? I imagine you still exist only go to restaurants. <laughs> yeah, but, the, yeah, but oh, acting like no one's ever died in a restaurant in America. Well, it's not like you go to a restaurant and just get like blasted or anything. Like, you could, no one you ever died hear. in a restaurant in Australia. Wait, that's a weird point. Shit happens, you could, no, but you couldn't hear. I'm sure there's been plenty of people that have been murdered in restaurants in Australia. Oh, yeah. yeah, but like millions, yeah, not as yeah, much. Millions. Not millions, <laughs> <laughs> tens of millions. <laughs> I am jealous of your guys' guns. Like that is cool, but uh, it's a bad time to be saying this. Actually, should I don't yeah. retract that statement? Censor <laughs> <laughs> that shit. Yep. Raise his volume on that. So, do you think you'll move to America permanently? No. I'm de definitely going to travel back a lot. It's nice that we can travel now from Australia. Um, but, you know, it's just like, I think Australia is just, I just feel safer there, which is nice. But it's, there's probably places in America. Like Florida was actually, maybe I was just in a nice area of Florida, but I, I thought Tampa was pretty nice. Um, Tampa is very nice. It gets a bit of a bad rep, uh, but I actually do think it is a pretty nice place to live. And you, you've been staying with William, right? Yep. Yeah, they're they're in a very nice area as well. Yeah, but Tampa's like, are there rough areas of Tampa? Like, oh um, yeah, we had yeah. a serial killer once. Uh, there was a serial oh, killer <laughs> pretty close. You've had to... plenty of serial killers, surely. No, but yeah, but this was a cool one. Our, our serial killer uh, <laughs> eventually got caught because he put his gun in a McDonald's bag and gave it to oh, a police yeah, officer or us. something. Yeah, it was like the Seminole, Seminole something. Seminole Heights serial Whoa. killer. He See, that's around. why America's better. I don't know. Better might not be the right word. He just walked around and shot people at night. <laughs> what the fuck? It didn't happen here. That's what I'm, that's what I'm fucking saying. Imagine the fucking gang. I visit Florida and I get killed by the Seminole Heights serial killer. Just Jackson, you only now. go to restaurants. He would literally walk around <laughs> neighborhoods and then just shoot people that happen to be out. How the fuck am I going to get to the restaurant? I got to walk through somewhere. You don't walk through anywhere. You take, all we did was take Ubers <laughs> or drive. You literally maybe got like a little bit of outside air in between going from a house wasn't, to a car. <laughs> wasn't he, uh, <laughs> wasn't he, um, wasn't he an Uber driver or something like that? No, what, you're just what? making shit up. He was a McDonald's <laughs> employee. Yeah. You're just trying oh, to get yeah, killed. Oh, yeah, so okay, I, don't, I can't go to McDonald's job. anymore. I was going to get killed by the several he was Heights not, killer. He was not killing people at McDonald's. He was just walking around and killing people, like, around neighborhoods. You shouldn't be around serial killers constantly. Every time you go to a McDonald's, you're going to get killed by a serial killer. Jackson, it gives you a exactly. better appreciation for life. You have Stockholm Syndrome. <laughs> I agree with Charlie. See, thank no, you, Alex. Like See, he gets it. it. We should though. ship our serial killers to Australia. Yeah, let's just <laughs> let's make Australia oh, more yeah, dangerous. Oh yeah, like that's never happened before. <laughs> well, I mean, that was the plan, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. All the criminals. Yeah, we'll just indoctrinate what? Alex. He'll become a domestic terrorist over here and take it to Australia. Isn't it interesting how that's how Australia started? We shipped all of Britain's like prison convicts, and it's become the safest country ever, ever. Well, I mean, first we, those people killed all the indigenous people and then yeah, it became That wasn't a, safe a very country. safe time, you're right. <laughs> it wasn't safe then. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. then and now it's all right. 
We, we've got serial killers as well, though. Or maybe no, not serial uh, killers. The, the only yes, one I can think of was like Ivan Milat. We got the, the Ivan Milat. Then there was the granny killer who just killed grandmas. Oh, yeah, but yeah. He, <laughs> That that would mad, obviously. That would, that, I, I'm safe there. I'm not a grandma. I'm Is fine. that really that a exactly. crime, though? Like, how old are the grandmas? You also they were on their the, way out. Yeah, who cares? Come on. <laughs> what was it called? You had the yeah. Snowtown murderers, which was multiple yeah, of Yeah, the them. bodies in the barrels. Yeah, that guy. Yeah, that was pretty oh. fun. Didn't you guys also have, like, an epidemic of hitchhikers going missing, and then one day people realized, oh, it's this That was dude. Ivan Millat. Yeah, that was Ivan Millat. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's like, there's like three big ones that I can think of. The the bodies in the barrels one was a big one, but that was like it's a still, cult not, kind of thing. It's still not that many people. Like, don't you guys have serial killers that have killed like 50 or 60 people? Oh, yeah. yeah. We've got, we've got like, some real John superstars. Wayne we have the yeah. high scores. Heavy hitters, yeah. <laughs> scores. Yeah, it's insane. I mean, it depends. I mean, if, if, if you add like a Brazilian cartel hitman into the equation, I'm sure he would do numbers way bigger. Oh, that's different but, though. That's disqualified, I assume. That's just his. That's his job. Yeah, okay. that's his job. It's professional. This is like <laughs> hobbyists. Um, <laughs> hobbyists and <laughs> wannabes. <laughs> like Americans have ones that have never even been found as well, like Zodiac Killer and stuff like that. I, no, Didn't no, we know. We, we know who that was. We we caught that guy. Yeah, Ted Cruz. He's, <laughs> he's dead now. Hopefully. Yeah, I, no, I can't think of any other than, like, Ivan Millat and the Snowtown Killers, and I guess the Granny Killers. The Crick Killer, yeah. Yeah, but, I mean, Australia... And, that, that, and again, that was all, like, 50 years ago as well. Yeah. Snowtown was, like, what, 90s? Uh, I don't know. I just yeah, know there's a pretty decent movie about it stuff. called Snowtown. It was 90s, I just checked. It is strange that there are so many serial killers in America. Like, I guess you guys have a bigger population. Yeah. There are other countries that have more people and less serial killers. So I'm like, what? I mean, Australia's population is what, 25 million? We've got cities in America cities. that, like, rival that. Like, yeah. it's, it's just the fact that we have so many more people. We're the third most populated country or fourth or somewhere in the top 10. You have, like... Eight times the population, which should mean that you'd have eight times as many serial killers as we do if it was a linear graph. But it's not. I feel like you guys have like easily like a hundred more, hundred times more, or more. <laughs> no, it's like a disproportionate. Maybe we're just really good killers. at it. They are. Yeah. You're just really good. Just professionals. Yeah. Like There's America's also a good chance in Australia, happens. like you're not catching them. That yeah. could be it. Maybe you're. Yeah, maybe you guys are just really bad at it. Yeah. Maybe the serial killers in Australia are so good. They're the best serial killers. That it's just like, they're not even rec their deaths aren't even recognized as, you know, crimes. This is oh, where serial killers come to retire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, man. I, I always think about that though. Like how, how many just fucked up people I'm interacting with on a day by day basis. Like if I go to a shopping center, just how many like, potential murderers there are in the shopping center in my vicinity. I, what is wrong with you? <laughs> like, why do you yeah. think that? <laughs> I think the same thing. It's interesting. <laughs> what are you, why are you acting like that's such a crazy thing? You should be, how are you not thinking about that? You're the biggest hypochondriac ever. Yeah, but I don't go out to whatever store and be like, man, I'm probably surrounded by murderers right <laughs> I now. I didn't say that. I said, I wonder how many murderers are around. Like, yeah. there has to be like one. I wonder yeah, but that probably two. makes you think that everyone's a murderer. Yeah, you no, I don't think everyone's a murderer. I just want to know who the murderer is. <laughs> it's not a game of Clue, Jackson. Like, there doesn't have to be a murderer in every situation in public. But that's... Oh, my God. What aren't you getting? It's like a hypothetical who... Like, potentially, who is the murderer? How many murderers are there around? So you're just going around judging people? Like, <laughs> this, <laughs> this guy is I, I totally get it. You go to this fucking supermarket and you go, I wonder if anyone here has killed somebody. It's fun. Yeah. yeah. I guess. Well, I, I usually yeah, think it's a fun that... little thing. What, it's a what, little thought. What is different about what he just said than what I said, but you're like, oh, yeah, okay, I guess. <laughs> it makes sense because Andrew Americans. says it. You bitch. <laughs> It's just you're wondering well, about other people's that. lives. I usually think that, but I'm like, I wonder who here is a pedophile. Oh, <laughs> another classic. Who is it? Like, especially when Don't I was at the, at, boxing match, tournament. at the boxing match, I looked around I'm like, there's 10,000 people here. There has to be at least 100 pedophiles here. Someone. <laughs> Alex is crunching numbers while boxing. Like, there's five <laughs> pedophiles in row E. <laughs> just get out of the ring Something and be like, huge, so punch him in the face. 
So it gives you your motivation. Pedophile mm-hmm. hunter. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> I don't know. I don't understand, Charlie. I don't understand why you've been such a bitch about it. You absolutely would think that. At least, I like, don't... once. <laughs> why, why, why I've been such a bitch about it? I just don't think in public, like... Man, I wonder how many murderers are around here. Okay, I think but I can. But you are so averse to danger. No, you're, I am, you're but confused. Not- okay, Charlie's a hypochondriac. I think if you s- first saw it on the news that there was an active serial killer loose in Tampa, I think then yeah, you would be mistrustful of everyone, absolutely. including your own father. <laughs> okay, well, you're, like, that's how you carry You would away. be scared of everyone. <laughs> if, there w- if, the, if there were like the Seminole Heights killer has broken out of prison, I'd be like, oh God, all right. Then I'd start analyzing here. everything. Then but I'd you, be in why would you, the situation. Then you're, a, then you're a fucking idiot. You know who the Seminole Heights killer is. Bad example. True. It's so <laughs> <laughs> if they say the Seminole Heights killer broke out and changed his identity, then I'd start to worry. <laughs> Me too. Wearing a disguise like where he, it's like the mustache and glasses. I feel like if the Seminole Heights killer did come out, uh, like get out of prison, he'd be coming for you first as well. With how much shit you've talked about him? Absolutely not. What do you? Ta- Why would he? He's there's you no way he listens to the podcast. <laughs> so yeah, now you're because you prison. think he's listening now. So you're like, damn it. Yeah. <laughs> you're I love serial killers. Now you've you given him ammo. Best. He's like, oh yeah, I'll show you. I listen to the podcast. Come here. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, let's. When does he get out of prison? Let's find out. Hey, I'm sure he got a life sentence. He killed like five people. Uh, yeah, tell yourself that. Make yourself feel better. Yeah, hey. he absolutely got a life sentence. <laughs> oh, he like, could never you break out and come did. for you. No way. It could never happen. <laughs> you better hope he did. To be fair, we were shit talking him while he was active. He, he oh, yeah, even, bring that up. Remind him. He, he didn't do anything. He's, <laughs> he's, he's, he's done. He's, he's out of the game. Oh, yeah, call yeah, him a yeah. Pussy, he's totally you? done. Yeah, I bet he would never go after you. No, no. A man with lots of money and fame? Never. Uh uh-uh. uh. Oof. So, <laughs> oh, apparently, the state is seeking the death penalty against him, which is even better than a mm. life sentence. Yeah, that, that, that would, would be a life good. sentence. That would be good for Andrew and I's safety. <laughs> <laughs> you should, you I'll should sleep better at night. <laughs> you should go to every one of his parole sentence hearings and vote. <laughs> we applaud when he gets the guilty verdict. Like, whoa, let's go! <laughs> yeah, but that's then what if he gets off? <laughs> What if he gets like off and you need a backup We're like plan. WWE fans outside of the court. Come on, take him down. <laughs> Let Charlie squeeze what the story then, Alex. I was saying I'm going to be on the other side just in case he gets out. Then Ooh. I'll just be like, I was, I had your back, bro. You know, Charlie <laughs> and the others. They were talk, they were the ones talking shit. I didn't say anything. I said you're a gr- you're a great serial killer. You did great work. You know, had your back. <laughs> then I'm the same. Yeah, I feel like you're gonna make a video getting him out of prison. That's the video making. That's what he's doing. That's what he's doing. You figured it out. Thing. I did a thing. I broke a convicted serial killer out of prison. <laughs> I um I really wanted to do a video for a while where I go to the zoo, and I teach monkeys to escape. Um, you know, kind of like come in with like diagrams, maybe chuck them costumes of the workers that, that, you know, change, like clean their, their pens, figure out some way to get them to escape. Um, Just to see if you can get on the headlines, like monkeys escape with like some mission impossible style, like plan. Yes. (laughs) Yes, exactly. You're going to create the rise of the planet of the apes. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Imagine that. Imagine that. Breaking a monkey out, I, I feel like it would be easy. You could just throw like a ladder, right? So it can they can cross the yeah, gap. Yeah, right. <laughs> smart. <laughs> just a oh rope God, ladder. Kaya, like... You're stealing all his ideas. <laughs> How did I not think of that? Thank you. <laughs> it really does seem like there's so many options for an animal to break out. Like when you go to a zoo, there's not many things that like stop an animal mm. from escaping. Oh, so mm-hmm. Chad like, says they just... have ceilings for their cages, but. So I just went to the Amsterdam Zoo and the one in Hamburg. And in both cases, the, what they do is they enclose the monkeys with like a moat that they can't jump or cross. You know, it's like either empty or they, it has water in it. That's why I was thinking like literally just extend them a plank so they can cross the moat. Oh, yeah. They and they they get out of that shit all the time. My girlfriend used to work at the Tampa Zoo and they would talk about how one of the monkeys, they would just get out and walk around all the fucking time, like pretty regularly. <laughs> 
the, the security is not that good. Like, what about Harambe? The kid literally fell in. Like, if the kid oh, can yeah. fall in, then a monkey can fall yeah. out. Yeah, but they couldn't get the yeah. kid <laughs> a out, monkey right? could fall out, out to shoot if a the kid can monkey. fall yeah. in. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, did you guys hear of that tiger? I, th- I forgot which country it was in, but like these these men were like tormenting a tiger. Um, it wasn't in a cage. It was in a similar enclosure with a moat. And then apparently the tiger jumps out and then stalked him down the street and then killed like two of them and then went back to the zoo. That's that's <laughs> a fantastic story to hear. I love hearing it's when fucking... the animal actually wins against people like yes, that. Yes, it's <laughs> awesome. It's I haven't like, heard that. Why do you go that back? might be <laughs> exaggerated, but... It's his home. It's his habitat. He did what he had to do. He's yeah, cozy there and he spot. gets fed. If you had a spot you sure that, that every day had food, clean water, shelter, all of your needs met, you'd go back. Why not? Yeah, but like, I maybe he was framed. Maybe he didn't actually do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that could actually be very true. <laughs> I don't understand why a tiger would go back to a prison. Because they don't see it as a prison a lot of the time. They don't so, conceptualize it that way. And to be fair, I, you, I think you might have like a really negative view of zoos overall. Some are bad, but some of them are like actually really good to the animals and like a really good option for them to live and survive. For, for most species, not all, but most, they live longer and better lives in captivity than just roam in the wild. Yeah. Dude, I... is it San Francisco? San Francisco Zoo. Three victims of a That's tiger like the attack concrete, wasn't haunted it? the animals before it jumped out and killed one of the men holy shit Wait, that's what? awesome jesus christ the san francisco zoo tiger attacks yeah the if they really like smoking zoos marijuana, that are like how is that relevant <laughs> if they really want to get out they can really like get out like animals are strong as fuck we don't really think about how high they can jump and shit like they're, they're fucking nuts I mean, you're saying that, but I'm sure people at a zoo do think, hmm, maybe the tigers can jump. Like, <laughs> I, feel I like... don't know, man. Like, the tiger enclosure at the zoo, for example, it's like just a fucking giant stone wall, and I have good suspicion that tiger could climb the shit out of that thing if it felt like it, no problem. And that's all that's standing between you and a tiger, so... <laughs> He's the tiger doing parkour and jumping out. <laughs> well, the good news is that 90% of the day he's taking a nap, so you're all right. You're just, just don't fine. torment him and you'll be fine. Yeah. yeah. Just don't Every time him. I've seen tigers and lions and zoos, they're always asleep. Yeah. Yeah. That's the problem with animals, man. Like, they're fucking boring. Most animals do nothing but sleep all day. It sucks. Yeah, yeah, you're like, not wrong. yeah. They they should they need a hobby. It's kind they of unfortunate. Sports. Like the most active animals I always see, see at zoos are the monkeys usually, or anything monkey adjacent, like red pandas and shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, have you guys seen that recent video? I don't know if it was recent. I saw it recently, anyway, of the two monkeys performing oral sex on each other in front of the. <laughs> no, that's, see, that's what all zoo. animals need to do. <laughs> what are you yeah, talking that's... about? Have you not seen so it? <laughs> no. So Jackson is watching bestiality or something. <laughs> yeah, Jackson went to like washazoo.com <laughs> xxx. Wait, that's not even bestiality if it's two p- monkeys performing on each other. There's no human involved. Yeah, and just because Jackson was naked while watching, it doesn't mean it's bestiality, okay? <laughs> <laughs> <He's> fine. <laughs> How have you not seen it? It was on Reddit. No, I didn't see. I didn't even hear it. I don't want to. No, no, it was on Reddit.com slash r slash bestiality. How did you not see it? <laughs> <laughs> there was a bestiality subreddit, right? At some point. Yeah. There no, was. Sure there was. Yeah. Uh, here, I'll find it. That's Are you looking up animal shit. porn? <laughs> Jackson's going performing. to his bookmarks. Uh, let's see, which one of these 50 <laughs> websites should I use? Why did it make an impression on you? What was special about it? <laughs> what do you mean? It was two monkeys blowing each other. It was funny. <laughs> <laughs> Just for laughs. Funny. Yeah, Jackson was cackling as he was coming. That's so mundane. Couldn't They're mundane monkeys. It. They do everything to each other. Yeah, but it was like right in front of the fucking glass. They were putting on a show. It was like there was a whole crowd around it. Was everyone sure <laughs> was watching it? Yeah, everyone was cheering. It was cheering great. Clapping. Even monkeys were like gathering around in the back to watch. I didn't know. Let me see. We finally obtained know. species harmony when we can all watch two monkeys blow each other. Okay, that is I, pretty I've been funny. I've thinking about it a lot. 
I've been thinking about it a lot lately, and monkeys, like, I'm starting to think more <laughs> and more that monkeys are just like us. <laughs> yeah, I'm just thinking about the video. <laughs> more and more. No, like, it's, it's, it's crazy how similar they are to us. Like, look, what's in it? There's no, like, biological reason for this. There's no, like, survival instinct. This is just two monkeys enjoying their time. That's like us. It's crazy. That's Maybe true. there was like a joke to them, like, we'll make these humans feel weird. Blow me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe hey, quickly, they like the kindergartens like are coming watching. in. Quick, quickly suck me. my dick in front of the kindergartens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just for a prank, no homo. But, <laughs> but that's 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 my point though. Like they're just doing it because they want to. But it's like there's not there's no instinct there. It's, it's just desire. You don't know <laughs> that, desire. Jackson. Instinct. You're not a monkey. What if they have an instinctual drive to blow each other? It's like yeah, part of their exactly. life cycle. You don't know that. But we're told that animals only fuck because no. to, uh, in order to make babies. Like it's a survival. No, thing. there's animals That's, that fuck for fun. Yeah, there's heaps. Dolphins. Dolphins. Dolphins I think is the penguins, only one that I could think of. Maybe. No, penguins just grab stones and give it to each other. They're no, romantic. No, I think, I think there's penguins that also fuck for fun. I might be wrong. I know dolphins, though. Yeah. Have you seen Dolph the seals the that rape one. penguins? Have you seen that? It's fucked. Right, well, <laughs> no, I can't say I've seen that. Oh, my God. <laughs> is that Australia's pastime? It is. You it go is. seal but, watching? And you guys haven't seen it? <laughs> right. no, I haven't seen what that is one. with Australians bookmarking these websites? <laughs> <laughs> My God, it's good. We've, we've got nothing else to do but watch animal porn. It's just, <laughs> it's just normal. <laughs> Fair. You're too safe, so you get too comfortable. You need thrills, exactly. excitement. It was a, it was an American zoo, Andrew. This one's on you guys. No way. We were too, we were too busy defending against serial killers while you guys were jerking it off to whatever animals were fucking that day, <laughs> alright? Yeah, you're weird. I, I mean, don't all animals only have sex because it feels good to them? It's not like they intellectually know, oh, this is going to cause me to have offspring. No, yeah, I don't think there's any right. pleasure in it. What? what yeah, not is, every animal yeah. feels good. Like a, like a praying mantis dies when it fucks. Gets ripped yeah, it to doesn't pieces, know that so. before it fucks. Again, it doesn't know no. the outcome of fucking. It only knows my penis is in the vagina now. I like this. It doesn't. Yeah, know they sex. like it because they're tricked <laughs> by their brains. Because they, like, well, yeah, they I guess it. they don't know that it's going to lead to a baby. Yeah, yeah, they, that's they, all they enjoy it on like a mechanism. biological sense. Right, look, when I was yeah, at the that, zoo, that I saw a pleasure mechanism. I saw two baboons wait, butt wait, wait, fucking. Kaya, Kaya, yeah, Kaya, let let the guest talk. Sorry, I didn't hear. <laughs> no, I, I was just saying that. Yeah. You're saying it's biological, but it'll definitely be a, a pleasure thing. It'll be like, yeah, when they have sex, it feels good. Otherwise, they wouldn't do it. Like, they would also have pain things. So, if they had a thing that made them feel pain, they would, would you know, not do it. And then they get tricked in, into it and then just die at the end. I feel like there oh, must be, like, a, like, some kind of teaching or something that tells them, like, you have to even, you know, like, they know they're going to die. Like, I feel like there has to be something in there that lets them know they're going to die. Something in that mantis pussy? I don't know, something in their, like, <laughs> upbringing. I don't know, maybe their parents give them a, a talk or something, but I just, I definitely think they have to know. They, maybe they, if they, they really watched do. their parents having sex, then they would have seen their parents die. It would have been, it all would have made sense. Wait, wouldn't they see their friends, like their bar wait, friends? Wait, wait, no, wait, wait, no, wait, 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 hang on, go, go, go a step back. They have to die to have sex, and then you just said maybe they watch their parents That's die the, while having sex. That was my sex. joke, that was my joke. <laughs> yeah, oh, joke. I thought you were being serious, I'm so confused. <laughs> yeah, but like, surely they see other praying mantises do the same thing, right? I would think so, right? Like, yeah, because maybe they have friends and they're like, oh, he, he's finally getting laid. Then he just gets my man. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> then they go, oh, I gotta like, try that. Oh, oh what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> that sex is so good, it kills you? Fuck yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> Yeah, it's like a gruesome death too like when a mantis fucks I think the the female rips its head off or something yep. yeah Whoa. decapitates it <laughs> why? Yeah. why for no I think, I th well no I think it's because <laughs> it makes the male come 
and they they oh, have to do it so that the they reason. can't work. No, I don't just think ask that's the reason at all. <laughs> well, could you please exactly. come now? I've been waiting here for so long. I want you to strangle me. Nothing for the woman, man. Just slap me around a little, spit in my mouth, <laughs> rip my head off. Rip my head off. Rip my head off. Oh, boy. <laughs> well, pr praying menaces don't have like clits or anything, right? I assume. There'd be nothing in it for the female. Yeah, just because Wait, you, you can find, find out. It? Hang on, I'll go into the yard now and find out. <laughs> yeah, I, I did a thing, I gave oral to a brain mantis. <laughs> That's your next video. Off. I gave a monkey a blowjob as a prank it and do it at the zoo. At, at San Diego Zoo. Yeah, <laughs> while everyone's watching. And that's why I didn't want the zookeeper to know. He doesn't know what I'm doing with that monkey. I gave a monkey a blowjob to help it escape. <laughs> to teach it how good life is outside the zoo. Oh yeah, Except you get sticks so good it leaves the zoo. <laughs> I, I created the first interspecies animal. It's my I don't think I think there's been plenty of interspecies. I don't think there's been interspecies animals, but I don't think it's for a lack of trying. Yeah, there's been plenty of people who fucked monkeys <laughs> since yeah. the dawn of time, for sure. Well, I'm scrapping this video then. <laughs> yeah, it's, not gonna be the first. it's not original <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah it's been done on youtube before <laughs> this has been a fucking weird episode <laughs> <laughs> all right do you want to get do you guys want to wrap that yeah we can wrap there i'm sure alex is a very busy man gotta go do videos and collabs and youtuber things so he's got a monkey to, to meet <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah got a hot tinder date um <laughs> Yeah, shout, shout out your channel and stuff, Alex. Where can people yeah, find so you? Yeah, so my channel name is I Did A Thing, and I guess I I just make things. That's what I do. Entertaining Everything videos, we talked about in in this podcast is what I do. Oral sex to monkeys, you know. Serial killers. Helping serial killers making escape. Making death all trap of it. carnival rides. All of it, all of it. So go check it out. <laughs> yeah i can't wait for that video i'm excited i'm subscribed it's gonna be another thing that i'm gonna bring to the boys all for when you when you see it you'll be like oh that's what he was talking about if it happens right yeah <laughs> all righty um and yeah we've been the official boys official podcast we've got a patreon patreon.com slash the official podcast with bonus episodes me and uh kai finished watching the halo tv series so that's mm -hmm. up for a watch along We've got a poll up there at the moment to dictate what we watch next, so go vote. Uh, you what else? Also, Anything else, guys? You tricked me into watching Obi Wan Kenobi, lest you forget to mention that. <laughs> yeah, still, I mean, yeah, we're going to put that out, right? You didn't just steal an hour of my life for nothing. I wasn't recording. You were, right? <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's wrap. Alrighty. Uh, yeah, thank you, everyone. Uh, we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. See you later. Thank you.